Okay, so the objective will be to understand what is a square function, like for one of the specific transformation um, that we do on functions. And how do we sketch the graphs related to the square function? So let's just simply understand firstly the notation terminologies and all. So let's say if you have been given y equals to f of x as a particular function. Now uh, you have x values, you have f of x values, and then when you say squared function, in squared function, the mapping in the original function is x comma y, in the squared function it is x comma y squared. For the same x values, your y values get squared. Now, some of the inferences that can be drawn from here uh, are basically, when you say y squared, now if my y value is negative, for example, let's say here one, two, three, four, and five, these are my x values and my y values are let's say minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one. And let's say two, for example six is two and let's say seven, I take it as 0.5, okay? Now, when I do fx squared, fx squared will be um, basically negative three squared is gonna be nine, negative two squared is four, negative one squared is one, zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four, and 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. So what we notice is that now, the point that it was at one comma negative three, now it is coming at one comma nine. So number one is, there will not be any part on the graph where you'll see the graph below being below x axis for the squared function. So any y values that are negative, they get squared and they become positive. So another interesting thing you'll notice is that when the y is negative one or one, the squared function is also one. So wherever your value is negative one or one, if you square it, it doesn't change. So y equals to one is referred as an invariant point. So any uh, negative one squared you do, it is one, but negative one is changing to one. So that we can't say negative one is invariant. But one squared you can see is, is one out here. So it is invariant point, which means that for wherever the graph is, when y is one, that point remains there. Also, you notice that when the function is 0.5, a squared is smaller than this value. So we'll, we'll tackle this once I'm doing a particular question. You'll notice is that if your function is between minus one and one, if you square that, those y values will become smaller than the actual y value. Like for example, 0.5 squared is 0.25. So 0.5 squared is bigger than 0.25. So we'll, we'll take in account first, like one of the basic graphs to actually understand the uh, basic general idea about how to sketch the graph. Let us let us take a basic function here and try to sketch the square for it. So let's say my graph is, this is the graph for the function, original function here is zero comma four. And this point, which we need to take is, let's say negative two. Now, as you know that when I square the value like zero, let's say I square the y value zero. So these points are not going to change because you could see zero square is also zero. One square is also one. So also try to draw y equals to one line. When I draw y equals to one line approximately, let's say this is y equals to one line. So these points are also not going to change because you can see that five comma one is being remaining at five comma one. So Logically, wherever the function, wherever the function is, these data is not in context with this graph. So please don't get confused. This is just a, to illustrate the example about the squared function. Now, so these points are not gonna change. Now, the common sense here is that for the same X value, you're squaring the Y values. So now let us say this point, for example, somewhere if I mark, it is at negative two. Now, if I square the negative two value, it becomes somewhere four. So this is somewhere four here. So this is four out here. So in this case, if I sketch the graph of it, my function is approximately gonna be something like this. Because 
square of a negative value is going to be uh, positive and negative 2 square will go at 4. Now the shape of the graph little bit here and there will be fine like sometimes it's like more straight that's okay there is no problem at all. But the only rationale is that if my original graph was assumed that if I draw absolute value graph for this, it will be something like this. Here, the original function will be maybe something like this at this stage. So whenever you're sketching the um, square function, just, just make sure to it that um, general, use the general like, you know, the nature of the function to sketch the square of it. Like for example, if my this value, let's say I'm just taking when x is, let's say, uh, for example, this is one, my corresponding y is, let's say, uh, let's say this is point negative 0.5. Now when I square this, negative 0.5 square will be 0.25. So this is 0.25 here. So you can see that this y value and this y value, they're like, you should have a, a logic that you should reduce the y value for a squared function. So, so this is what I wanted to show through this point is when the function is between minus one and one, the square of those y values will be lower than the actual function. Now let us talk about this side. When you talk about this side, um, so these are original y values. So if I square them, my squared function will be below the original graph. This is what I'm trying to say. And obviously after one, it will just overshoot the original function. Same way out here is between below between zero and one, whatever the function part is, your squared function will be below the actual values. And after that, it will overshoot. So this is generally like, um, uh, the, these are general observations for the squared function and um, some of the rules to remember. So here, the first thing that we'll do is that mark the invariant points that are not changing. So these two points are not gonna change because these are the y as zero. And also y equals to one is the invariant point. So we're gonna mark y equals to one uh, so that we have the clarity on how to draw the graph of this side. Now, um, so obviously we know the square of this function will be negative two squared will be four. So it'll be at the same point close to four. And like go here reach four and come down this side between zero and one this function will be below x below this line and then after this it'll be shooting up this side uh it is going to be something like this which you can remember this is how the squared function for this particular expression look like so now these two questions basically will have already the vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote also in the graph also you can see the second one had just has the horizontal asymptote at y equals to 1 so what we do is um, number one is basically uh, you mark the vertical asymptote so vertical asymptote doesn't change so vertical asymptote remain as it is now comes the second point is um, the horizontal asymptote now, obviously, when the y value is 2, if you square y value is 2, it becomes 4. So square of y value is 2 becomes, let's say, y equals to 4. So when you talk about this, it is y equals to 4 here. Now, um, the invariant points, obviously, you mark it. Uh, they are going to be 1, so y equals to 1, and y equals to 0. So these are the invariant points. So it means the graph is going to pass through that point. Now this side, obviously you can see it's negative. So square is going to be positive and this is going towards infinity, negative infinity. So reciprocal of that square of that will go to a uh, positive infinity side. So this side, the graph is here. Here you can see the maximum, it goes till to this side. So reciprocal, I mean the square function for this will come from here and become stagnant around four because it can't go beyond four because the y value this side, they're not crossing to. So the reciprocal square function won't cross the uh, y equals to four line. Now, as far as this side is concerned, what you see is the minimum value that is four. And obviously square, if you square these values, like zero comma four will come at zero comma 16 or something here, I'm not able to show, but approximately the graph this side is gonna be something above this line, y equals to, uh, four line because the minimum that it comes to is y equals to two and the square function is going to cross y equals to uh, i mean it'll be above y equals to four line 
Um, so once again here for this question, you can see that these will be the, oops, this will be the y equals to zero uh, will be the invariant point, which is at negative one and one, and obviously y equals to one. So y equals to one line you can already see. Now, this side, when you talk about the between negative one to one, the square of this value is gonna be from positive nine. So it'll be somewhere cutting at positive nine. And this side, the graph will be something like here. And after this, um, this side, obviously the square function will be approaching also to y equals to one. And this side, uh, until one, it will be below at this graph. And after that, it will overshoot the original function. So that's how uh, the squared function will look like. 